I'm Dan Rasmussen, the founder and CIO of Verdad Advisors, uh, and I'm here uh, hosting a conversation on behalf of Real Vision. We're talking today with Greg Obenshane, who's Verdad Advisors Director of Credit. Uh, Greg has spent the last few years studying the high yield bond and corporate credit market through a quantitative lens, um, building uh, one of the largest quantitative databases. Uh, of individual corporate bonds uh, ever built uh, and studying what predicts returns uh, within corporate credit uh, and looking at the market through, a, I think, a very interesting uh, analytical lens. Uh, so I want to start. Thank you for, for joining us uh, today, Greg. Thank you for having me. Greg, could you start by telling us about, you know, you've written a lot last year and early in 2020 uh, about what was going on in credit markets. Could you talk about your thesis then? Yeah, sure. So for the last several years, we've been in what what, what we call and we we call internally the the fool's yield environment, where uh, there's been a substantial reach for yield, and and that can be very difficult to define, um, because what what does reach for yield mean? But uh, for us, it's the you know, we we actually think it's when it's reaching down into the bottom parts of the high yield market where you think you're going to get a seven percent yield, an eight percent yield, and you think that you're you know a really smart analyst, so you can get this. Um, but in fact, what you end up earning is a four or a three percent because your base rate of loss is such that it's very hard to do better than what the double B market or the higher quality high yield market does. So for the last 12 months, we've been pretty vocal about this fool's yield idea, saying that you know the probably the best you could do was a four percent return. Um, and that what we were seeing in private credit markets, what we were seeing in some of the riskier uh, loan markets, um, was uh, not really sustainable behavior. Um, and that especially pension funds who'd started to allocate a lot of money um, to private credit, and particularly the sleeves of private credit that were doing deals with very high leverage um, in particular, um, were, were really engaging in much riskier behavior than they perhaps realized. So, Greg, when you say fool's yield, I think what you're arguing is that above a certain point, credit risk doesn't pay off. Uh, so if you lend to someone with a 20 percent yield, uh, the losses are going to outweigh uh, the returns. And I think a lot of folks intuitively understand this, that, you know, a 30 percent payday loan probably isn't going to yield 30 percent. You're not going to get the money back. Uh, but tell us how you got to the exact number. I mean, how, how do you sort of locate where on the current market spectrum? Uh, the fool's yield is. What's your process? How did you get to that? What was the research that led you there? One of the hardest things to do um, in, in credit is to look at a bond by bond level analysis of what's happened in the past, right? To go back and really dig into the We have index data. That's what everybody has. Um, but really, that's a very crude cut of, of what's going on. Um, so what I spent many years building was a bond by bond database, basically, where you could go back and say, what happened when we bought bonds that traded like they were in the lower half of high yield, right? That, that traded with yields that suggested they had risk. Did they actually return their yield or did they return yes, uh, less? And when we stacked all those up, what we saw was that bonds that um, were trading as if they were riskier, actually had lower returns. So they didn't realize their yields, whereas bonds that traded as if they were higher quality in sort of the higher part of the high yield market actually did make their returns and actually a little bit more. What's surprising, and I think would be surprising to most people, is that last year when we could sort of figure out the dividing point of how far you needed to step down the, really, the, the implied credit rating spectrum, where you started to take more losses and you got in gains from taking on more yield, really happened much sooner than most people think. It happened sort of that, that double B to single B split. And, and for those of you not familiar with the high yield market, you have um, really three parts of it. The double B part, which is the highest quality, the single B part, which is the middle, and then the triple C part, which is the lower part. And, and that, that fool's yield dividing line really happened um, sort of between double B and, and single B over history. Um, that meant that last year, 4% yield was probably the best you were going to do. And I think that is surprising for especially people who are trying to get out and find a seven and believe they can find a seven or eight. It's actually much, much harder or was much, much harder than um, you'd think.